Good day, students. I will be doing question six today. Uh, the exercise from the 2017 question bank, and the name of the exercise is Daisy Close Cooperation. And this exercise reads as follows: Daisy Close Cooperation, uh, uh, Daisy CC operates a standard costing system and manufactures. Beaded uh, necklaces for children. They plan to produce and sell 10,000 necklaces per month. So this company only sells one product, which is the beaded necklaces for children. And we are given the standard information for this company. Then we can see that there is actual uh, information for the month of April. Then after we have additional information for the same month of April. And in the requirements, we are required to calculate the actual break-even sales value in units for the month of April. And requirement number two, or B, which is the last one, is to prepare a reconciliation statement reconciling the budgeted profit for the month of April with the actual profit and provide say uh, provide sales material labor variable and fixed overhead variances in as much details as possible so the main focus for this exercise will be uh, the calculation or the preparing of the reconciliation and it becomes very important uh, not only to understand to do variance independently or individually but also to reconcile the budgeted with the actual through the analysis of the variance so now we uh, go to the question and we read the information that is provided to us under standard information we are given the selling price which is uh, per unit which is per necklace, uh, the selling price being 40 rand. And we are given material in grams, which is 200 grams, and the cost per unit still remains 6 rand. And I would like to convert this into cages because it is easy to work with cages. So if I want to convert this into cages, it will be 200 divided by 1,000. Uh, grams therefore now this will give me 0 0.2 kgs if we say uh, 200 divide this by 1000 uh, it gives us 0 0.2 kgs meaning we need 0 0.2 kgs to complete one unit of a necklace or as we need 200 grams to complete one unit of necklace either way you call it it, it does not matter then after we are given our labor hours per unit, which is 0 0.5 hours of labor, and the cost of labor per unit uh, will be 10 rand. So it takes 0 0.5 hours uh, to complete one unit, meaning only 30 minutes. If they wanted, they could have said 30 minutes. We then have variable overheads of 4 rand, uh, which is 4 rand per unit. And this variable overheads, it varies uh, with the material. Then that was the standard information. It's better say that fixed overheads amount to 50,000 per month. So the fixed, remember the information that is provided to us is per month also the standard which is above. Then the 50,000 of the fixed overheads are, are per month too and they are allocated to production per labor hour so it means if there will be a need for us to calculate the predetermined overhead rate we have to calculate it based or using the base of labor hours then after we go to the actual information that is provided to us we are given the actual results for the month of april and the actual results shows that the number of necklaces that were produced amounted to 10,000 units. Remember, we previously budgeted to manufacture 10,000 units. This was a plan to produce and sell 10,000 units. 
and fortunately we produced the same 10,000 as we anticipated or as we estimated or budgeted. Then we have material that was purchased. Take note, it says material purchased. We purchased 2,500 kgs of material. That was also another reason I decided to convert the grams into kgs because uh, my uh, units are converted or my units are in cages. So we buy material in cages. However, we only use 200 grams, which is 0.2 cages to complete one unit based on the standard information. So now we are given the cost of this material and after we are given the direct labor and this is the actual labor that was incurred and the total cost provided to us and we also have the variable overheads which is 43,000 rands as a total. Remember previously information was given per unit, per unit, per unit. So now in this in the actual information they gave us the total not the per unit anymore. So now we have uh, this 43,000 for variable and our fixed overheads it is 45,250. Previously we had our fixed overheads as total 50,000 which was budgeted. So we budgeted to incur fixed cost of 50,000 but we actually incurred 45,250 and we manufactured the same units that we anticipated to manufacture uh, from the standard information. So now obviously when it comes to the fixed overheads uh, expenditure variance this will be a favorable variance because we incurred actually less fixed costs than we estimated to do so. Then we proceed to the information that is additional. It says there were no raw material work in process or finished goods inventory at the beginning and or at the end of the period, meaning production becomes sales. Whatever we estimate to produce, we sell it on. So now the, the assumption is the same assumption of the economic order quantity, if you still remember that EOQ. One of the assumptions of the EOQ is that demand is constant, meaning whatever we buy, or, or whatever we manufacture within the period, it will all be sold in that period. So uh, the fact that there is no opening and there is no closing, meaning production is equal to sales, therefore now the assumption of constant demand will apply. Then we go to number two, when it says material issued to production, meaning we only issued the material of 2,050 rand. Remember, we bought material or we purchased material of 2,500 kg, but we only used the 2,050 kgs of material. So now we can see that the purchases of material and the usage of material are different. So this becomes very important when we do some of the variants to know which amount to be taken into consideration. Then after we uh, proceed with that uh, under number three. Under number three it says we have material is recorded at cost or at actual cost and the results of the company are accounted for on the absorption costing basis. So now they say the company is uh, making use of the, of the absorption costing system. So now that means when we are calculating our budgeted profit, as the requirement said that we must prepare the statement to reconcile the budgeted profit uh, with the actual profit. So now when we are calculating this profit, budgeted profit, and we're calculating the actual profit, we need to take into account our fixed cost uh, per unit because the company is using absorption costing system. Then uh, number four says the actual sales for April amounted to 410,000 rands, which is our actual sales revenue. And those sales revenue were out of the 10,000 units that we produced. This was production. And remember production was exactly the same as what we anticipated and all that was manufactured was all sold. 
so now we have analyzed the information this exercise is honestly one of the short exercise uh, just out of 30 marks so now for this reason i will just go straight to the requirements i don't have to be writing down the analysis we are required to calculate the actual take note the actual break even sales volume not the budgeted meaning when we're calculating our break even uh, sales volume we need to focus on the actual uh, fixed overheads of 45,250 instead of focusing on the 50,000 because the 50,000 was budgeted fixed manufacturing overheads and it was under budgeted information so now always be careful of the question make sure that you read detail and you analyze uh, the question very well word by word a word can change the entire question or the entire perspective of the question so now we are calculating the actual break-even sales meaning we are focusing on the actual information not on the budgeted information and this is for the year or for the month of april so now let us uh, calculate our break-even point and we know that in calculating the break-even point the first thing that we need to know is to know our actual selling price then after we also need to know our variable cost then we get to our contribution per unit so now meaning the first thing is to calculate our contribution per unit for us to achieve uh, the calculation of the break-even point so we need contribution per unit and we know that our contribution per unit is made of the selling price per unit so now we have to go and check how much is our selling price per unit after we get the selling price we need to subtract the variable cost all the variable cost after we have deducted all the variable cost then this will give us or will get up to what to call contribution per unit there was no actual selling price per unit that was given to us but under additional information number four the transaction said that the actual sales for april amounted to 410,000, and we sold the 10,000 units that we manufactured so now that means the selling price will be the total sales revenue of 410,000. we divide this by 10,000 units and this will give us 41 rand per unit as the selling price per unit so we have 410,000 as the revenue divided by 10,000 units that were manufactured and sold then we can discover that our selling price actually was 41 rand remember just to recap and do comparison that our budgeted selling price was 41 rand but actual sorry our budgeted was 40 rand but our actual is now 41 rand if the break-even point was budgeted therefore now we're going to take the 40 rand of the selling price which was the budgeted selling price however the question requires us to calculate the actual uh, break uh, uh, break even point then we have our variable cost our variable cost are made of material we know that material is a variable cost and we also know that it was uh, it will be made of labor and overheads i don't have to say variable because the heading already say variable cost therefore now i have to take into account my overheads the fact that the company is using absorption costing system i want to emphasize on that the fact that the company is using absorption costing system does not mean that uh, when we are calculating our contribution per unit we must take into account the fixed cost that is not applicable in that context only when you're calculating the total cost per unit or the production cost you account for the fixed cost in total or per unit so in this case we are not calculating the total cost of production but we are calculating the contribution which is the difference between the selling price per unit and the variable cost all in total so now we have to look for the actual information and check for material under material we know that we had a total 
cost of a uh, material which was 78,750 rands. So now in uh, doing this calculation, we need to divide the total cost uh, of material uh, by the purchases of material that we made so that we get to know how much was the material uh, cost per unit or per, uh, per, 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 per unit, yes. So we say 78,750 divide that by the units that were manufactured. We manufactured and sold the 10,000 units. So we divide this by 10,000 units. Then this will give us now the total of 7,878. And I want to stop there and I redirect your attention because I know most students will just take this cost and say cost divide that by the units. And this answer is incorrect. Why this answer is incorrect is because Although we purchased 2,500 kgs of material, but we only used 2,050 kgs of material. So now when we are calculating the uh, uh, cost of material per unit, we need to calculate on the value of material, which is 2,050. So now we need to know the value of material that contributed to the production of 10,000, the value of the 2,050 kgs of material. So now what we do, we say uh, 78,750. We divide this by 2,500. We get the, co the cost of material per kg. So now we first need to calculate the cost of material per kg. Cost of material per kg. Cost of material per kg. So now we say the cost of material per kg will be 78,750. And we divide this by the kgs that we purchased meaning it costed us 31 rand 50 cents uh, per kg to buy uh, to buy 1 kg of uh, material it costed us 31 rand 50 cents then the question is how many kgs of material were used in production so we used 2050 kgs of material to produce the 10000 units so it means we need to know the cost of the cages that were used to produce the 10,000 units. Let me repeat that. We need to know the cost of material that was used to produce the 10,000 units. If we only used 2,050 cages of material. So now we know that we bought uh, each material at 31 rand 50 cents. Then we say term this by 2,050 cages. Therefore, now this will give us the total cost of material that was incurred to manufacture the 10,000 units that we have manufactured. So now it will be 3150 times this by 2,050 and this gives us 64,575. This is the cost of material in total, which is the total cost of material total cost of material to produce 10,000 units. This is the total cost of material that we have incurred to produce 10,000 units. So now what do we need? We need to know the cost uh, of material per unit. We need to know the cost of material per unit. Then the question is, how much is the cost of material in total? The cost of material in total is 64,575. How many units were manufactured? We manufactured 10,000 units. Therefore now, that will give us the cost of material per unit. And the cost of material per unit will be 6 rand 46 cents. If we round off to three decimal places. Please be mindful of this type of question where the purchase is not the same as production, where the purchase is not the same as the issue in production, it is a bit a trick. You must 
take into account uh, only for the cages that were used to manufacture the units that will be manufactured. So the cost of material will be six rand forty six cents. When it comes to material, we'll have six rand forty six cents. Six rand forty six cents will be the cost of material. Then we go to the labor. We have incurred the total cost of labor. And our total cost of labor is 94575 And the labor hours that were spent were 4850 Meaning now we can just say uh, the cost divided by 4850 This will give us the total uh, cost of labor per unit. <clears throat> Uh, this will be 94,575. We divide this by uh, the, sorry, 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 not by the labor hours because I will have to multiply again. We divide this by the number of units that were manufactured, which is 10,000 units because we need the cost per unit and uh, not the cost of labor per hour. We'll do that later on when we do the variance. We have 94,575 divide this by 10,000 units and it will give us the amount of 946 cents. So now this becomes the cost of labor per unit, not per hour. If we divide it by hours, this will give us the cost of labor per hour. It is 946 cents. If you want, you can show the calculations here, 46,575, divide this by 10,000 units. And you can also do the same with regards to material. Then after we go to our overheads, again our overheads, we have the total of the variable overheads as 43,000. And we need it per unit, so we divide this by the number of units that were manufactured. Same thing, then we say 43,000, we divide this by 10,000 units, and if we divide that, it will give us 430 cents. So around 430 cents will be the actual uh, variable overheads per unit as 430 cents. So now there was no other cost that was variable given to us. So from this point, we can just add all the variable overheads that we have calculated. Plus 946 cents, plus 646 cents, and this gives us 20 rand 22 cents. This gives us 20 rand 22 cents, which is the total of the variable cost minus the selling price of 41 rand. Then this is 20 rand 78 cents. And 20 rand 78 cents is the contribution per unit. This is the contribution per unit. And I just want to remind you once again, whenever we have only one product, we don't need to calculate the production mix because there is only one product. But if there were two products, therefore now we'll have to calculate our production mix per unit. Then our production mix, then we multiply uh, with the production mix to the contribution, then after we get to the total weighted or average contribution per batch. So now we can calculate our break even point at this point. Break even point. And our break even point is the actually fixed cost. Don't forget, it is actually fixed cost of 45,000, I think 250. Yes, here is actual information. This is the fixed cost, 45,250. Because we are calculating the actual break-even point. 45,250. Divide this by contribution per unit of 20 rand 78 cents. Then this will give us uh, the number of units that the company must uh, manufacture and sell in order for them to be at the break-even point. We have 45,250, 45,250, divide this by uh, 20 rand 78 cents, and this gives 2,000, 
110.78 units. So now if the company manufactures this number of units, then it will be at the break even point. Let's check the question if were we doing break even point in units or break even point in value so that we answer the question it was break even a uh, value in or volume in units so we calculated that and be mindful once again if it was break even sales value if it was break even value then we'll have to multiply this by uh, the selling price and the selling price uh, which is 41 rand then after that will give us this uh, break even sales value but that was not a requirement but something to be mindful of whenever you see break even point check if is it in unit if it's break even a uh, volume in units you stop here if it's sales value then you have to multiply this by the selling price so we are done with the first requirement which is out of five marks once again be mindful of the material this was material purchased. This was material used. So when we calculate the cost per unit, be mindful of the calculation that I have shown you. Don't just take the cost, which is the purchase cost, and you divide by the units. No. First calculate the cost of the material that was used. Then the minute you get the total cost of the material that was used, then you divide that by the number of units that were manufactured to get the cost of material issued uh, per unit then now let me proceed to number b without uh, wasting any time we are required to prepare a statement reconciling the budgeted profit uh, with the actual profit and provide sales material labor variable and fixed overhead variance in as much details as possible so we are required to be as much details as possible and we need to be mindful of that as much details as possible so now we have to provide all the details that we can provide so we are doing the reconciliation statement reconciling a budgeted with the actual profit so we do reconciliation or reconciling budgeted with the actual profit reconciling budgeted profit with actual profit budgeted profit with actual profit so i prefer to start because we are reconciling budgeted so we need to have budgeted profit first budgeted profit we know that our budgeted profit start with sales we need to know how many units we uh, budgeted to sell and at what price and I think we budgeted to manufacture 10,000 units at 40 rand per unit. Let me just confirm that our budgeted selling price was 40 rand. And we have seen that before. That was our selling price. And we budgeted to manufacture and sell 10,000 units. So that is where that is coming from. Then after now, we need to take into account the cost of production and our cost of production is six rand uh, ten rand and four rand then we uh, can also take into account our fixed cost uh, per unit or also in total depending to whatever approach you want to use but i just want to use the detailed approach uh, not the simplified or condensed approach uh, which uh, i will show you that maybe to other videos so now we have our sales, then we have to say less our cost of sales. And whenever I say less cost of sales, it means I have to take into account fixed cost in the production cost. Then we have our material. Remember, there was no opening. If there was opening inventory, we'll have to start with the opening inventory. Then we take into account production. Remember now, all these are under production. Or let me say... Uh, 
all these are under production if you want we can just say production so the materials under production but we will just say material remember material labor and overheads are all total production costs so we'll have material labor and overheads which is the variable overheads then after we take into account fixed uh, overheads and we already know that our fixed overheads is 50,000 rands that we have seen it already so now we must calculate the sales which is 40 rand times by 10,000 and it gives us 400,000 rands as our total sales 400,000 rands is the amount of sales so now we first have to calculate our budgeted and we know that material was budgeted to be bought at six rand per unit and we know that we budgeted to manufacture the 10,000 units so that will be 10,000 units that we want to manufacture and the cost of material was six rand therefore now that will bring us to 60 rand of the budgeted cost of material let us confirm that so that we don't write the incorrect figures yes our material was budgeted to be six rand per unit then we have our labor and our labor per unit is estimated at 10 rand so that means we also have to say 10 rand of labor times by 10,000 units that you want to manufacture and this will give us 100,000. 10 times by 10,000, this will be 100,000 rands as the budgeted cost of labor for the month of April. Our overheads uh, cost per unit was estimated to be 4 rand, the variable overhead cost per unit. Our variable overheads, let me just write there with the... Uh, with a different color to say V as indication of variable cost. So we said it will be four and time this by 10,000 units that we anticipate to manufacture and sell. And this will give us the total of uh, 40,000 rents that we anticipate to incur in terms of overheads to manufacture the total 10,000 units. So our cost of sales will be 60,000 plus 100,000 plus 40,000 minus 50,000 minus 50,000. This gives us 150,000 rands. and 150,000 rands becomes our cost of sales then after we get to our profit this is our profit which is budgeted profit so our budgeted profit will be minus 400,000 and our budgeted profit will be 250,000 rands our budgeted profit will be 250,000 rands. So now from here we can proceed and we calculate or we do the variance or the analysis of the variance. So now let us analyze the variance as they go by. Uh, starting first with the sales volume variance because that is normally the variance that we start with. We start with the sales volume variance. Then now our sales volume variance will be sales volume variance. Our sales volume variance, we are focusing on the volume of sales. We have to say we had our actual sales minus our budgeted sales. We have our actual sales minus our budgeted sales times this by 
our standard contribution. Don't forget, we always multiply this variance by the standard contribution. The sales volume variance is always multiplied by the standard uh, contribution, not by the selling price times this by standard contribution. And we know that our budgeted sales and our actual sales were the same. We budgeted to manufacture 10,000 and we actually manufactured the 10,000 units. So now that will be 10,000 minus 10,000 units times this by the contribution. And we calculated contribution to be 20 rand 78 cents. So this will be zero rand variance, meaning there will be no variance when it comes to the sales volume variance. So we could have also skipped that, but since they said we must be as detailed as possible, so we just also needed to show that there was supposed to be our sales volume variance. Then after we do our sales price variance, our sales price variance, our sales price variance is the actual selling price, which we know it was 41 rand minus the budgeted selling price, which is 40 rand. We times this by the actual sales. We times this by the actual sales. So let us look at the actual sales of which we know that whatever that we manufactured was all sale was all sold. So meaning we can just uh, multiply that by ten thousand, then it will give us variance of ten thousand favorable. Forty one minus forty. It will give us one times this by ten thousand units. It will be ten thousand rands of a favorable variance. This variance will be favorable because we sold at a higher price than we budgeted or than we anticipated or than we estimated. We estimated that we'll sell our product at 40 rand, but when we sold them, we actually sold them at 41 rand. So that means we made higher income per unit and also in total than we estimated to do so. So we have taken into account the variance that relate to sales. Remember, once again, if we had two products, we'll have to do the variance, which is called the sales mix variance. But in this case, there was no sales mix variance. So now we can uh, only do the sales volume and the sales price variance. Then after we go to the material, we go to the material. Remember the question said we must do sales, material. I just want to check all of them. They are already in my head, but I want also to recap for those who don't have the variance in their mind yet. Sales, material, labor, variable, and fixed. So I am done with the sales. Now I'm doing material. There are two variants under material, two variants under labor only one variance only one variance and here there were two variants under sales so it's also very important to know i am saying is two under sales because we don't have two products if it was two products this was going to be three variants sales price sales mix and sales volume variance but because we don't have two products only one product therefore now we'll only do or we have already only done we have already done the two variants that are necessary then now going to the material variance. Material variance will be in price and also in usage. So we do material, material, issue price, or material issuing price. Then under material issuing price, we will have our standard price of our material. Let us go and look for the standard price of our material. And our standard price of material per kg, 
our standard price of material per kg we had a price of six rand we had a price of material per unit which was six rand and i don't want it per unit i want it per kg so now if we need our material per kg it will be six rand divided by 0 0.2 kgs remember we converted the 200 grams where we said 200 grams divide by 1000 uh, uh, grams in a kilogram then that gave us 0 0.2 so we say 600 per unit divide that by 0 0.2 it will give us the cost of material budgeted per kg so 600 divide this by 0 0.2 it gives us 30 rand this is 30 rand per kg so now it means we estimated to incur 30 rand of material per kg so now it will be a standard cost of 30 rand minus the actual price of material per kg remember we calculated that as 31 rand if my memory still serves me we calculated the actual cost of material per kg as 31 rand 50 cents so now because of that we say uh, minus 31 rand 50 cents and we multiply this by the actual material that was issued into the production department then we time this by 2050 we don't multiply it by the material that was purchased remember we bought 2500 kgs but we only issued 2050 kgs so now this is the one that we multiply with unless the production or the pitches were the same as the issue so now if the pitches were the same as the issue then there wouldn't be a crisis you could take any of the two because it will be the same uh, cages so we term this by the actual quantities that were issued into the production department so now we say 30 minus 31.50 and we can see that this variance will be unfavorable and we term that by 2050 which is the cages and it gives us the variance of 3075 friends and this variance is adverse or unfavorable variance and we go to the material uh, usage variance material usage variance we have material usage variance our material usage variance will be the material in terms of cages then after we took into account the material in terms of cages then we term that by the standard cost of material per kg so we need to know the standard quantities minus actual quantities standard quantities minus actual quantities used take note actual quantities that were used term this by the standard uh, price of material actual quantities i want to show the calculations for that separately actual quantities or sorry standard quantities which is sq is equal to actual production is equal to actual production term this by standard cages term this by standard cages let me write it in full standard cages or liters per unit then we say how many cage how many units were actually manufactured and sold we manufactured 10000 units how many standard cages meaning how many cages on standard meaning how many budgeted or standard cages do we estimate it will take to complete one unit we know that it takes 0 0.2 cages to complete one unit so that is the standard cages per unit that i'm referring to so now that will be 10,000 actual production times by the 10,000 uh, times by the 0 0.2 cages per unit 
So that is how we calculate the standard quantities. Standard quantities are always based on actual information, which is normally actual production. Then we have 10,000 units, term this by 0 0.2 kgs per unit, and it gives us 2,000 kgs. So now standard quantities, in other words, we say we estimated, let me just go there and explain the standard quantities, If what does standard quantity mean? Remember, we anticipated that it will take 0 0.2, two cages to complete one unit and now if we completed if we completed and manufactured the 10,000 units therefore now how many cages were supposed to be spent or were supposed to be used if initially or if on standard we said that it should take 0 0.2 cages so we want to know how many cages were supposed to be used to manufacture the 10,000 units if on standard it takes 0 0.2 kgs to complete one unit. So now we have our standard quantities as 2,000 uh, kgs of material minus actual quantity used. We only used 2,050, term this by the standard price per kg. Remember, these are kgs. This is kgs, this is kgs, and this must also be kgs. And when uh, uh, ever inside their cages, you also multiply by the cages. This was 30 rand per kg. This 30 rand was per kg. And the 31 rand was also per kg. Sorry for the zero that I forgot there. Just uh, wrote it now. So now this is, uh, you always have to make sure that you, 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 you use the same uh, units or the same values. Don't mix things. Don't mix uh, the cages with the units. If you have the cost per kg, you always have to multiply by the cages. Then if you are dealing with the cages and units and cages, then whatever price you multiply with here must be a price per kg, not a price per unit because the price of material per unit was 6 rand, not uh, 30 rand. 30 rand was per kg. So now hence we take that because we are dealing with the kg. We need the material usage which is material is used in kgs. 2050. Term that by 30 rand uh, per kg. So now let us show those calculations. 2000 minus 2050. We multiply this by 30 rand per kg and it gives us an unfavorable variance of unfavorable variance of 1500 rands so now we go to the next variance once again go to the next variance don't forget that this is adverse we go to the next variance and due to the limit of space then i will go to the next page the next variance it will be that of labor labor we know that it is standard rate minus actual rate remember the rates is per hour is the labor rate per hour so we have to multiply this by actual hours because the rates are per hour so this will be labor rate labor rate variance then our, our standard rate, we need to see how many, how, how much does it take to complete, uh, how much does it cost a company per unit of uh, labor? Or how much does the company pay to each employee per hour? We already know how much is the cost of labor per unit. Cost of labor per unit is 10 rand, but we want it per hour. So now we have to say per unit divide by the number of hours, which is the 0 0.5 hours. So that will give us the cost of labor per hour, which is 10 rand divided by 0 0.5. This will be 20 rand per hour. So now we do have 20 rand, which is the standard rate. It is 20 rand minus the actual rate. 
we need to go under actual information. Remember, we are reconciling budget with the actual. So under actual information, I previously made a mistake where I took this 94,000 and I divided this previously from a mistake perspective by 4,850. So now this, the, this calculation was needed at this stage. 94,575 divide that by 8,000 or 4,850. Then this is the variance or the total actual labor cost that was incurred. 19 rand 50 cents. So now this will be our actual labor rate per hour because we divided by the labor hours. 19 rand 50 cents times by 4,850. 4,850 is the actual hours. The actual hour that we have divided by already. So now the rates uh, of labor per hour, then we have to multiply that by the hours minus 20 and we multiply this by 4850 the variance will be a favorable variance don't look at the sign remember i said 19 minus 20 we're supposed to say 20 minus 19.50 then that would be favorable variance term this by 4850 therefore now is 2425 this is a favorable variance we estimated that we will pay our employees 20 rand during the production month of april but in actual fact we paid them 19 rand 50 cents so now that means this is good for the company because we have incurred less expense than we estimated to incur our expenses in terms of the labor rate then after we calculate our labor efficiency variance our labor efficiency will be standard hours minus actual hours times this by uh, the standard rate remember i said standard quantities is based on the actual production similarly with the standard hours standard hours are based on actual production so now for us to get to what we call standard hours of labor it is equal to actual production times this by a standard labor hours per unit standard labor hours per unit standard labor hours per unit so now we know that actual production is 10,000 units. Term this by standard labor hours per unit. And our standard labor hours per unit is 5, is 0 0.5. Standard labor hours is the number of hours it's supposed to take to complete one unit. Remember, we had 0 0.5 hours, meaning it takes 0 0.5 hours, which is 30 minutes, to complete one unit. So that is the 0 0.5 I have used. So now my standard hours becomes 5,000 uh, hours. Then I compare that with the actual. I have 5,000 minus actual hours we have already uh, seen. That is 4,850. Turn this by the standard rate per hour. Our standard rate per hour, remember, it is 20 rand. That was our standard rate. Our standard rate is 20 rand, which was 10 rand divided by 0 0.5. That's where that 20 rand is coming from. Our standard rate per hour, meaning the number, the, the rate of uh, labors or our employees per hour, the rate that they earn on an hourly basis. This will be what we normally call hourly wage. So 5,000 minus 4,850. It's 150 times this by 20 rand. It gets us to an amount called 3,000 rands. An amount of 3,000 rands. And this variance is very favorable. So we have done the two variance, which is labor rate and labor efficiency. Then another variance that we must account for is 
the variable over heads variance is the variable over heads variance so our variable over heads variance will be very similar to labor sometimes sometimes not similar depending to the absorption base the base to which our variable overheads are absorbed on in this case we have our standard cost per unit so now we need to know our standard cost in total remember when i speak of standard cost standard cost standard hours standard quantities meaning there is something that will be related to production so my standard overheads or my standard variable overheads will be the cost of overhead per unit times this by the actual production this will give me the standard variable overheads meaning the overheads that we supposed to have incurred if we estimated initially that we will incur four rand per unit so how much was supposed to be the actual cost if we had incurred according to our standard per unit then after we take that amount we compare with the actual variable overheads of 43,000 and the difference will either be a favorable or unfavorable variance so now our standard variable manufacturing overheads standard variable manufacturing overheads it will be equal to 4 rand times this by 10,000 rands. So now meaning our standard cost of variable overheads will be 40,000 rands. Meaning we should have or we supposed to have incurred 40,000 if it was based on that 4 rand per unit. So meaning now our standard will be less than the actual so the variance becomes unfavorable because we actually incur more than what we supposed to have incurred if the variable cost per unit was as we anticipated to be four rand per unit so now we do our variable overheads variance which is standard cost minus actual cost our standard cost is four and times that by ten thousand units minus forty three thousand rents so the difference will surely be three thousand rents unfavorable variance so we do have the 3000 which is the unfavorable variance then after now we account for the last variance we account for the last variance and the last variance will be the fixed overheads variance then after we do the fixed overhead variance fixed overheads variance fixed overheads variance our fixed overhead is the budgeted minus the actual we budgeted to incur 50,000 and we actually incurred 45,250 50,000 minus 45,250 we get to 4,000 750 and the variance is favorable this is unfavorable let me confirm the actual which is fixed 45,250 that was right budgeted was 50,000 so these are the major variance that we are supposed to have accounted for as per the requirement and now from here i can calculate the total from the budgeted profit up to the last variance that i have up to 
the last variance that I have. So now let me do the calculation now. We okay let me do a confirmation first of my profit i think i've made a mistake in my profit here just to recalculate my profit we had hundred thousand plus 40 plus this is two hundred thousand this becomes two hundred and fifty thousand let me check that sixty thousand plus 100 plus 40,000 plus 50,000 yes it's 250,000 not 150,000 so 250 minus 400,000 it is 150 I did the vice versa so we have our profit here as 150,000 not 250,000 uh, sorry for that miscalculation. The figures were correct in terms of calculations. Then we have 150,000 of our profit plus 10,000 of the favorable variance minus 3,750 of the or 3,075 3,075 of the unfavorable variance minus 1500 of the unfavorable variance then we go to the next page plus 2425 2425 2425 plus 3000 minus 3000 of the unfavorable plus 4750 of the favorable variance oh, that will be 3000 plus 4750 okay let me recheck my figures we have 150000 plus 10000 yes plus 3075 or minus 3075 minus 1.5 plus 2425 plus 2425 plus 2425 plus 3000 yes minus 3000 yes plus 4750 then this gives me a total of 162600 it gives me 162,600. Let me confirm that. Yes, 162,600. This will be the actual profit. Or this should be the actual profit. If the actual profit is not like this, therefore now something is wrong. So now let us do the actual profit. So now we're doing the actual profit. We know that our actual profit is made of sales. Or let me say actual profit so that there is a heading again to show a different calculation. Our actual profit is made of sales. Okay, there's now space. Our sales was given as 410,000 if you still remember. Our sales were given to us as 410,000. Uh, let me check where are those sales. The sales volume was given as 400. Yes, here at the bottom. Yeah, we have sales actual as 410,000. There is nothing else to calculate. Then now our material. Remember, material we don't take this material of we don't take this material of 78,750 we take the material of 64,560 something it was 64,000 if I still remember let us calculate it once again 
we set our actual material cost it will be the 78000 750 divide this by 2500 which is our purchases and that gave us 31 rand 50 cents then we said this must be multiplied by the material that was used and it gave us 64000 something so that will be 2050 turned by 31 rand 50 cents it is 64000 575 so this is the material that we are referring to the actual material that was incurred so we have to say less cost of sales and when you say less cost of sales this will uh, be cost of sales made of material and it will be made of labor our material being 64,510.75. Our labor cost, we take our labor as it is. We don't buy and use the different number. Our labor will be 94,575. Our labor will be actually 94,575. Our variable overheads. variable overheads cost is 43,000 rands hope we still remember all of that sorry to revisit everything all the time i don't want to leave people behind when they are watching the video 43,000 rands then our actual fixed 45,250 it was 45,250 which is the fixed overheads then now we have to calculate the total actual cost of sales the total actual cost of sales 64,575 plus 94,575 plus 43,000 plus 45,250 45,250 this gives me a total of 247,400. I hope that is correct. I try to be as accurate as possible. Minus 410,000. If we minus 410,000, we get 262,600. This is our actual profit. And whenever you reach at this stage, you will be excited whenever your reconciliation is reconciling. We can see that our reconciled is the same as the reconciled the amount of the actual. So now if these two are the same, the one that you calculated from the budgeted profit, this one, the budgeted profit, if after you got this, you plus the positive variance minus the unfavorable variance then up to the end you reach to this amount then now meaning the actual profit is supposed to be this amount then after you have to calculate the actual profit and if the actual profit gives you the same amount then that is the confirmation that all your calculations were 100 percent accurate so that's what it means to do the reconciliation i just want to bring your attention to uh, the closing part now for this question and my focus is particularly under the line item called the production cost i did make mention of that but i was uh, just bypassing i said if you want you don't need to have uh, all these different line items you can just save one line item that you call it production cost only one line item how would you do that for you to do that you'll first have to know how much is your cost per unit remember we calculated our cost 
and our cost was calculated uh, in total here yeah, as 20 rand if my memory still serves me. Uh, our cost, if you remember, was calculated as 20 rand 22 cents. That was our cost, total cost, which is our variable cost. So you'll only have to add the fixed cost. You'll only have to add the fixed cost. Then now adding the fixed cost will mean that you'll have to say 50,000 divided by 10,000. And doing that meaning fixed cost will be 5 rand. Then after adding 5 rand to 22 rand 22 cents, that will give us that will give us 27 rand 22 cents. That will give us 27 rand 22 cents. And if we turn this by uh, the 10,000 units that we wanted to manufacture, this gives us 272,000 rands. Uh, let me just check if is there anything that I'm missing because this is supposed to give me the same 250,000 rands that I have calculated here. Where we have the cost per unit for this one, the per unit for this, per unit for this, and the per unit for this. Then after we add only our fixed cost. Okay, let me just simplify it in the manner this is done. If we want to could have just said, let me just say, divide this by 10,000. Uh, divide this by 10,000. Then if we say 250,000 divide by 10,000. Divide by 10,000 units. This will give us 25 rand. So meaning our cost per unit would have been 25 rand. Then the minute our cost per unit is 25 rand, we can just say production cost is equal to 25 rand times this by 10,000. And that will give us only one line item. Instead of separating all these items, you have your material, your labor, and you also have your overheads. However, this is not important. You might not maybe understand it at this time because I'm just uh, not going in details and I'm explaining it as an... Uh, as an overview of the question that I've already done. So now this will be, uh, okay, I think this is exactly where I've done the mistake. I have 27 instead of 25. So meaning if this was rounded off to the whole number, it would have been 20 plus five. So that will be the 25 I was talking about. So I must have calculated this one wrong. So that 25 times by 10,000, will give you exactly the 50,000 rands that I'm talking about here. Otherwise, guys, yeah, I'm also very tired. If you have any comments, good comments, please uh, send me those comments. If uh, they are bad comments, also do send me those comments through the YouTube account. I'll try to perhaps uh, modify the way I lecture the management accounting text uh, uh, management accounting uh, module uh, better based on your feedback. Thank you guys. Uh, God be with you.